Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is gonna be all about the different cursor tools that are available to you in PreSonus Studio One. I'll tell you, I don't use all of these tools. There are much other ways to work around. You don't have to be switching your cursor tools all of the time, but there are three or four I definitely think you should pay attention to and you know how to use them. If you know how to use them, you'll be able to navigate your sessions for editing a lot easier than before. So first thing you wanna do is locate at the top of your PreSonus Studio One session. You're gonna see all of the different cursor tools that are available. The far left, you see this bracket. The bracket is basically gonna link our arrow tool and our range tool together. You can turn that off just simply by clicking on the bracket. I'll leave it off for now and then we'll come back to it a little bit later. So our first tool is the arrow tool. Here's a few different things that you can do with that. Here I have a vocal track. You want to have the arrow tool selected. If you go to the edge of your audio tracks, it's going to turn the arrow into a vertical line with two arrows on either side of it. If I click and drag this audio track, you can see that there's more information available to me that was recorded earlier on. So you can easily squeeze this in so that now I'm just getting that one phrase within the audio track region. Now let's say that this vocal came in a little too early. Let's say I wanna line it up with that blob that's just above it. Well, if I click and drag, it's gonna to snap to the grid. You see, as I, I'm just barely moving my mouse and it is just snapping to wherever the grid is. So that function is available to you at the top. It's called toggle snap. So you can hit the N key on your keyboard that will remove the toggle to snap allows you to freely move the audio tracks around without it snapping to the grid. Another way of doing this without turning off that toggle to snap, if you leave toggle to snap on or toggle snap on, you can click your audio region and as you're dragging it around, press and hold the shift key. And when I hold the shift key, now the snap is off and I can freely move this around wherever I want it to go. Okay, that's basically your arrow tool. Arrow tool, we're gonna to see in a little bit, it's gonna be linked in with the range tool. You're gonna to be using it quite a lot. Number two, the range tool. As you can see, my vocal edit up here, I've got a lot of grayed out or muted regions in the vocal. Another way of doing this, let's go to this section here. Let's say this first word or this blurb, I've got with the range tool selected, I can click and drag to highlight this little blurb and I can just simply hit the backspace key and it will delete that little phrase. Okay, I can do the same thing here. Highlight the region, hit delete. That's a lot easier to do than if you're using the split tool. Maybe you're used to going in here, making a cut, making a cut, selecting with the arrow tool, then hitting delete. That's a lot more steps that kind of ends up being more clunky than I like. So hit number two with your keyboard. If you hit number two, you can select as many audio regions as you want, even amongst other tracks. And if I hit the backspace key, now all of that chunk has been deleted. Let me go ahead and undo that function. Now I'm gonna talk about linking these two together. So when you start Studio One, most likely your arrow tool and your range tool are already linked to one. This is kind of like the smart tool that's available in many different DAWs out there. If I zoom in on this vocal right here, if I have the smart tool selected or I've got range tool and my arrow tool linked with the bracket, it changes what my cursor is doing based on where my cursor is at within the audio region. So if I'm on the bottom half of this audio track right here, it's an arrow tool, which I can click and drag and move the audio around. If I move this arrow up above the 50% line, it now changes to the range tool. So now I can use my range tool to highlight a region, delete, use my arrow tool, to move it around. You don't have to be switching back and forth with the number key. So nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna have this bracket for linking your arrow and your range tool together. You're gonna have that on, cause hey, why not? Uh, the other thing you need to notice is there is a blue bar. You see this blue horizontal bar underneath my listen tool right now. If you hit number one on your keyboard, it will cycle to different tools. What this is doing is it's giving me an alternate tool that's available to you as part of your grouped arrow and range tool. Sorry for all the words. I just feel like I'm <laughs> spouting a bunch of information, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you hit number one, it's gonna cycle what your alternate tool is. So what is an alternate tool? 
If I have my arrow and my range tool selected and they're linked together, and then my alternate tool is set to the split tool, what it will do is if I hold the control button or the control key on my keyboard, as soon as I hold control, I now have the split tool available to me. So instead of having to hit three on the keyboard, I can simply keep my arrow and range tool selected and I can hold control to make my cuts like this. And as soon as I release the control key, now I've got the arrow back available to me. If you're not seeing the split between the arrow and the range tool, you might have too narrow of a view on all of your tracks. So go down to here where this burger stack is. You can click and drag this up. They give you more expanded view of each of your tracks so that you can then see the benefits of the linked tools together. So if you're not seeing, if you've got the linked arrow and range tool together and you're not seeing it switch from the arrow to the plus, we'll just expand your size of how much you're viewing on each of the tracks, at least set it to normal and you should be able to see it switch back and forth. The split tool, as we just saw with holding control, if you decide to switch to that, that comes in handy a lot with vocals. As you can see, I've got a lot of cuts up here. Here's a vocal track I haven't destroyed just yet with the split tool. Split tool is handy. You can go in here again. If you hold the shift key, it'll give you more precise cutting. You can make cuts whenever they're supposed to be silence. Now we've got this range selected. We can hold shift and M to mute the region and then create a crossfade with the X key. I can select this syllable right here, which is probably an S or a T. I can bring down the volume of that if I need to at the top of the audio track and bring that down without affecting the audio around it. So the split tool is just like you're using a knife when you're cutting up meat or anything like that in the kitchen. You're cutting out an audio region so that you're only affecting the audio region that you've got sliced or selected, okay? So split tool certainly comes in handy. I'd highly recommend, make sure you have your alt key set to the split tool. So like I was saying before, you can just use the control key if you're on a Windows. I believe on the Mac, it's the command key. Just hold that down. You'll be able to use your alternate tool as well. So the rest of these, a few of them, I'm not gonna be using as much. If you hit four on here, it turns into this giant eraser. So as you can see, anything I click is just simply gonna be erased. Nine times out of 10, I'm not editing things that way. You can simply just click the audio region and hit the backspace key. Keeps things from getting as messed up. If you hit number five, we're looking at the paint tool. Paint tool is gonna to be useful, especially if you're trying to create new audio regions. Like down here, I have an organ track that I've not recorded any MIDI to just yet. If I wanna create a new MIDI region, I can just click and drag across here. Now I've got this MIDI notes region I can select and edit. Also, if you're looking to do any automation, you can hit the A key. That'll switch you over to this. You can change it to volume. And then with volume, you can switch to your paint tool. You can go in here and draw some fun automations with your pencil tool. Pencil tool is also gonna have a lot of alternate types of lines you can draw. Like if you wanna draw a saw wave or something, you can just click and drag across this region, make it as crazy as you want, okay? So specifically, if you're doing a lot of automating, you're probably gonna to wanna to use the paint tool a lot more than the rest of us. Nevertheless, that is the paint tool. To get out of your automation region, just hit A. Whenever you've got a track selected over here, if you hit the A key, sometimes this happens by accident. You don't see the record enable button anymore. Just hit A so you can get out of automation back to where you're supposed to be. All right, moving along, I believe we're at number six. Number six is simply a mute function. If you're having to mute a bunch of audio tracks, you can simply click them with the mute cursor. So that is available to you as well. Let's see, that was number six. Number seven, this is the other one that I'm gonna use quite often. So I wanted to show you on this bass track I've asked Studio One to quantize my bass track. If you ever wanna quantize your tracks, like this acoustic guitar track here, just have the track selected and hit Q on your keyboard. It analyzes the audio and then it's gonna shift all of it so that it's basically trying to make a perfect 
performance. But let's say they didn't get the quantization just right. If you hit seven on your keyboard, switch to your, what do they call it? Your bend tool. You'll be able to grab any of these vertical blue lines. So the vertical blue lines are transients. This is where it has detected something has happened. A note has been played. So here I've got a bass note happening on the bass track. Let me expand this a little bit more so you can see it. I've got a bass note right here and it looks to be right on pitch. But if I've got the bend tool selected, I can go down here where it's got this arrow. I can click and drag this transient so I can make that bass note happen a full eighth note earlier if I want to. I can make it happen. Let's see, that's a half note. What degree are we in? These are 16th notes. Okay, so this is a 16th note earlier. This is a half, a eighth note earlier and so forth. So when you've got the detection or bend tool selected, you can also remove the bend functions. So if you have seven on the keyboard, if you hit seven and double click any of these blue lines, when you double click the blue lines, it will remove the quantized function and it will snap the audio back to where it was originally at. So I've quantized this entire bass track, but let's say I only want to have certain notes quantized. I can just simply go through, double click any of these bend regions so that it's a more natural sounding performance. You can also click and drag and move these around. Anywhere that you don't see a transient, if you don't see a vertical blue line, just simply click and it will create a new bend region. Again, if it's snapping to the grid, hold the shift key get right up on the transient, and then you can move it around as much as you want. In the future, we'll have videos about quantizing. It's such an interesting thing, especially in 2024. You don't have to be quantizing just with drums or MIDI instruments. Let's get this one back to normal and we'll move on. Now the last one, if you hit eight, this is going to be the listen tool. What is the benefit of the listen tool? Well, what it will do is without having to solo your track, if I want to listen to this acoustic guitar part from right here at this exact moment, as soon as I click and hold, if I hold the click down, it will solo that audio track and then it will continue to play until I release the mouse button. So as soon as I release, it snaps right back to where it was. So if you're trying to find a very specific, maybe an annoying sound or something that went wrong in your recording, switch to your listen tool by hitting number eight on the keyboard. And then you can skim through your audio tracks and just take a listen to try to isolate where is that sound coming from and work through all the different tracks as well. So that's number eight, the listen tool. All that being said, when in doubt, just hit one on your keyboard, make sure you're on your pointer tool, your arrow tool, and your range tool. Make sure those are linked together with this bracket. And then make sure you hit one so that you cycle through your alternate tools and have the split tool selected as your alternate. That's the way that I'm gonna be going about things. But that being said, that is the cursors available to you in PreSonus Studio One. I'm sure you may have some questions feel free to drop them in the comments. I do my best to go through and answer as many comments as possible. You can visit my website, heychrisgreen.com, join the free email newsletter. So anytime I have a new video going up, which is usually once or twice a week, you'll be getting an email from me about where to find the latest video. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I'll see you the next one.